In this video, I'm going to describe how to solve a knights and knaves problem. So here's an example situation uh, from the knights and knaves problem. Remember, um, knights and knaves um, is a situation where knights always tell the truth and knaves always lie. What I mean by lie is knaves, the opposite of what they say is um, true. Um, so what they say is always false. Remember, we're only dealing with propositions here, so things can only be true or false. So we've got an example situation here where, um, where inhabitant A says both of us are knights, and inhabitant B says A is a knave. So uh, what we're asked to do is to determine whether uh, A or yeah, whether A and B are knights or knaves. So we don't have any information. Um, all we can um, well, yeah, all we can go by is the four possibilities. So we have the possibility that A is an, uh, well, let's, yeah, let's make a statement. So let's say that we have a variable, and our variable P represents the case that A is a knight, and our variable Q represents the case where B is a knight. So we really have four cases here that could that could happen. We could have the case where A is a knight and B is a knight. We could have the case where A is a knight and B is a knave, therefore not Q is true. Because if B is not a knight, then B is a knave. We could also have the case, the third case, where A is a knave and B is a knight. Or we could have the case where they're both knaves. So at this point in these problems, um, you can try to be clever with all the, you know, uh, I guess the, the, the language, but really what we have to do is we have to guess. We have to say, well, you know, let's suppose one of these situations is true. So um, I tend to like to think that they're both knights initially um, because, um, I don't know, that's a good starting point. So let's say we want to suppose something. And when I like, when I suppose things, I like to um, put them in a box so I remember that I've supposed them. So uh, what I would say is suppose P is true. Why? We've defined P. So what I'm saying here is suppose A is a knight. So if A is a knight, what can we deduce from this supposition? Well, if A is a knight, then what A said must be true. So what A said is both of us are knights. So if I translate that statement into our uh, variables, both of us are knights, uh, means P and Q is true. So our first statement is P is true. Our second statement is P and Q are true. Um, therefore, Q must be true. Why? Well, if P and Q is true, then Q must be true. And if Q is true, that means B must be a knight. Well, if B must be a knight, B is saying, that A is a knave. Well, if A is a knave, um, that, that equates to not P. But this not P contradicts with our original supposition, right? Um, so therefore, we've reached what's called a contradiction. So to show a contradiction, formal notation, we draw an upside down capital T. And then I like to draw a box around everything. It's also good to justify all of these steps. So our first supposition we don't have to justify because the supposition, uh, but the P and Q we got from, uh, I like to say, by what A said. The second uh, line here we deduced, therefore Q is just a simplification. So simplification. And then this not P we got from by what B said. So that's our first guess. Well, guess what? Our first guess was wrong, so we have to try another guess. So what should we try next? Well, let's try the next possibility. Let's try the possibility. Um, I guess I'll number these so we can keep track of them. So we've tried possibility one, so let's try possibility two. I guess I'll just go ahead and put it down here. So possibility two says, suppose um, P is true, 
Um, again, this is actually going to lead us right down the exact same line of reasoning, right? If we suppose P is true, then we're going to reach the same next conclusion because that's what A said. Um, so we're going to reach P and Q. Um, and so we're going to find then that Q is true and we're going to reach this exact same conclusion that not P is true. So we're going to reach another contradiction. So we actually know that both 1 and 2 are not true. So in that case, we actually know that 1 is not true and 2 is not true by our first supposition. Therefore, not P must be true. So let's suppose not P is true. Now, if not P is true, then that must mean that A is a knave. If A is a knave, then what A said is uh, a lie. If it's a lie, then the opposite of it of it is true. So, what is the opposite of both of us are knights? Well, let's look at the statement both of us are knights. Um, that statement is actually P and Q, so I'll do a little bit of work on the side here. So if our statement is P and Q, the opposite of P and Q is the negation of P and Q. So we negate P and Q, we have to use De Morgan's law here, and we get not P or not Q. So the opposite of both of us are knights is A is a knave or B is a knave. So that's our next conclusion. So we can say, therefore, not P or not Q. And this is by what A says. Um, and the fact that A is a knave in this case. So if we have not P is true and not P or not Q, this actually doesn't help us to determine whether Q is a knave or not. Um, but we can go back to our original statement here. What is, um, I guess, what does our, our um, native B say? They said that um, A is a knave. And we've shown here that A is a knave. So if B is telling the truth by saying that A is a knave, then B must be a knight. So we can therefore conclude that Q is true. Why? Because our previous statement said not P or not Q. So not P is true, so not Q doesn't necessarily have to be true. So we can suppose that Q is true, and then by what um, uh, B says, not P is true. So, we have uh, a case here now where we've uh, shown that not P is true, um, and we've shown that Q is true, and we haven't reached a contradiction. Um, all of these are consistent. Right? We have a not P and a not P. We have a Q um, and a not P. Therefore, when we don't reach a contradiction, then we must have found the right answer. So, the right answer is indeed number three. So, this is the correct answer. Um, why? Um, well, we've shown it. We have justification here. So if um, A is a knave, then we know that what they said is, is a lie. Therefore, we can write out um, the negation of what they said and, and take that as a truth. Um, and then we can, we can follow through by what B says and show that that's true. So to show that one of these knights or knaves problems or any other logical reasoning problem like them is uh, correct, what you need to do is you need to, to start with a supposition and follow through all the statements that you can in the supposition. And you have to use all the information. So we had to use both of the statements that we had in this case. If you have three potential knights or knaves, then you would have to consider all three possibilities. And we'd have to introduce a new variable, say R, to indicate um, whether the third um, native is a knight or a knave.